the higher the price of gold and silver goes, especially in a moment like that, only reinforces people's concern. You won't see people selling. There will be an absence of a secondary market. The way I see the interplay between the derivative markets or the paper price and the physical price, it's not. It, you can put it in a way that you could say the derivative markets are manipulating the physical markets fine, and I'm not going to dispute that. But the way that that I see, uh, the way that I kind of frame it, is that the derivatives price is really uh, there's there's two prices to gold and silver. There's the industrial price and there's the monetary price. the The industrial price is like how much gold does an electrician need to like coat his wires, or how much does a dentist need to like make his fillings, um, how much does a jeweler need to make his necklaces, that kind of stuff. Mostly jewelry. Um, and then there's the monetary price, and that is how many dollars. Um, if everyone wanted to get rid of all of their dollars today and buy and get gold instead because they don't trust the dollars, how many dollars are exchangeable for however many gold ounces are available? And that has nothing to do with the derivatives markets. Right? Well, that's I would argue there's actually a third price for gold, and that's where and silver, and that's what's happening on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, where. You know, silver is being priced over 10% higher in Shanghai at, at two and a half bucks higher than it is on COMEX and the LBMA. And, and gold has a, a varying uh, degree from four to seven or eight percent. So, you know, you're starting to see, and I don't know, you know, maybe you have a different take on it. I look at it as the beginning of arbitrage where they're slowly turning up the heat to arbitrage as much of the metal to 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 incentivize arbitrage where the traders will say look we can get hundred dollars more an ounce in shanghai or two bucks an ounce more in shanghai and silver let's 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 send it over there um i don't think the monetary system is going to last much longer i don't know exactly what you think is going to happen in the end whether whether the dollar is going to go back on gold or whatever it might be we, none of us know exactly what's going to happen but i think there's going to be a day where where it's going to be like 2008 or 2020, but much worse, where you're going to call your suppliers and they're going to say, look, we can't supply anything because nobody is going to exchange any gold for any dollars anymore. It's done. That's it. There's no more. So what what happens? What do you imagine yourself doing on that day? Is Miles Franklin going to become a bank? Um, you know, this it seems like a silly question, but like you're in a business that you're selling money. And when money becomes actual money again, there's no more derivative dollars and the dollar is either ex directly exchangeable for gold because there's no other choice for it to survive or the dollars are completely trashed and zero. What do you do? Well, that's what you just described to me is, is, is the old saying that there is no bull market like a gold bull market because every other bull market speaks to our desire to make money. They call that greed. We're motivated by two things, greed and fear. And when it becomes evident very scary that you need to protect yourself and everyone runs to it and there's none left to be found or the COMEX gets exposed and, and no one will deliver at that price or there's force majeure or whatever it may be. Yeah, I think that that certainly is something that I've thought about. I mean, because the difference being is that when the price goes up two or three times when you own an asset, you know, you're you're usually told to sell some of that off and play with the house's money or reallocate it or whatever, the higher the price of gold and silver goes, especially in a moment like that, only reinforces people's concern. You won't see people selling. There will be an absence of a secondary market. And look, you have, you know, you have five major mints around six major mints around the world, US, Canada, Austria, Australia, South Africa, UK. You take you take one or two out of out of out of commission, let alone all of them, and and like that it grinds to a halt. And when you realize guys like Rick Rule have said for a very long time, and he still says it, that the entire gold allocation from the Harvard Endowment Fund down to Joe Sixpack is less than one half of 1%, you know, just shifting one or 2% of those assets into gold and silver, um, I think that is kind of the double whammy. So, yeah, I do think there will come a point where the dollars and the treasuries lack the demand sufficiently needed to run this country and the mountain of, of debt that needs to... Uh, continue to be sold to the world to to finance our exorbitant uh, standard of living. I think those days are coming. And when that happens, you see interest rates go to the moon to compensate for, for all of those dollars hitting our shores as they're no longer desired or even forsaken or dumped in favor of other things. And, you know, I, I think offline you and I were talking about, I believe that that to me, gold seems very much like a treasury in the in the respect it continues to move higher and it lacks counterparty risk i do think 
that there will come a time where it becomes very obvious that there really isn't a demand. You can see it already with the, the long tails on the treasury auctions of any duration. That I think, I think there was there another one. Time. There was another one today. Another tail. I think the fourth one. In yeah, the row. and and that's that's. I mean, who in their right mind would loan us money for anything longer than six months? I, I think it's crazy. And I think the world sees that. And then they look at this country, which used to be the beacon of, like, for example, justice, Lady Liberty, blindfolded, holding the scales of justice. They're not balanced equally. I think people would agree with that. And, and you know, the, the, the way that our elections, we supposedly have the freest elections in the world. And people are looking saying, really? Is that, is that really the case anymore? And all of the things happening here in this country, to me, accelerate the ultimate dollar demise on top of the mismanagement of, of the, the world reserve currency and, and the sanctioning of assets and all the things that we are doing. And then when you take a step back and realize that the number one economic advisor to this administration is a man named Jared Bernstein, who advocates for losing the reserve status, that it's a privilege we can no longer afford. Everything starts to get a little, a little bit more uh, spooky and conspiratorial. But anyways, bottom line is, yeah, I do think that will happen. I do think there will come a day where getting precious metals becomes impossible. And it'll happen just like that. Because what is flush and low premium in terms of supply and premium right now, in the blink of an eye will change when you have, you know, the majority of America wake up to the reality that it there really are very few safe places to keep your money any longer. All right. Well, that's when our that's when our responsibilities move from stacking to spending. And that's how we'll save the world. I mean, more or less. Uh <laughs> hey, whatever. You know what? I I you and I do our our part, and I respect you for it. And I uh I know what it is to get get out in front of everyone and tell the world how you feel and what you see coming. And mm -hmm. um, I, I hope I'm doing my part right now, but I will tell you, and I'll, I'll say it again, gold and silver are not an investment. They are wealth. And where we are heading, I think it's never been more important. I think the big, the big ugly buzz phrase over the next few years will be counterparty risk and minimizing or completely, um, you know, taking counterparty risk out of the equation to me is, is valuable.